Hey, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Tech Workshop. I'm Joseph, a Senior Developer Advocate with AppSmith. And in today's workshop, we're going to learn about client and server side pagination with APIs and SQL. So two different methods and two different data sources. We're going to show you the best way to set it up for performance on large data sets so that you can connect the table widget and let your end users browse through that massive data set without any performance problems. There's a few things that are really important to get right here or else your app could become really slow and unresponsive. But if you do it properly and use the pagination features in the table widget, it's still possible to have 2 million records and your end users can browse and search through and go through the pages without any lag. So today we're going to show you how to use those features in the table widget and set it up for best performance on large data sets. It's a really important topic, but it doesn't take too long to cover. Uh, there's not a lot of materials, so it's going to be a shorter workshop today. And I want to take this opportunity to throw in an announcement. Now, you might be familiar with the new community leader role that we recently added. We have a volunteer from the community who's helping out in Discord and the portal. And we really appreciate you for stepping up. Thanks again, Sanja, for being our first community leader. Uh, but today we're announcing a new role. So next we're creating a AppSmith ambassador role. This is for either people who can help out in a specific channel other than English. We have a Spanish and a French channel. And we have two different volunteers already interested, so we'll be announcing that soon. Uh, there's people who help out regularly anyway, and we have a couple volunteers who are interested. So we'll be making that official and having an ambassador for those two channels. We're interested in adding more as demand increases, and we've been seeing a lot of content created out of Brazil and Portuguese and a few other countries, uh, the Netherlands. There was a video just a week or two ago that I found. So as we see content being created from other areas, we want to support our global audience as best as we can. And to that end, we're going to continue adding new channels and new ambassadors as demand increases. So if you're interested in a channel for your language or you're interested in leading one of those channels, then check out the link in the description. There's also the community leader role is still open if you'd like to apply. It's the same application form, just a different role that you choose. So. Uh, check that out if you're interested in being a community leader or a channel or language ambassador. All right, next is a regional or in-person ambassador. So the other way you can help out as an ambassador is if you're somebody who speaks at developer conferences, if you present or you have a booth at conferences uh, and you plan to go to more, we'd be happy to send you some swag to pass out and some extra for yourself. So check out the link in the description for the form to apply to either be a regional in-person ambassador or a channel ambassador for a specific language other than English. And also that community leader role is still open for additional positions if anyone's interested there. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and get started with today's workshop on SQL and API pagination. We're gonna look at client side APIs first, then we'll do uh, server side and go on to SQL. All right, let's check it out. Okay, first we're gonna check out API pagination. And for this example, I'm using client side pagination. So I have a hundred records on the client side, one API request, it returned a hundred records, but we're only looking at 10 at a time. So in the table widget settings here, you turn on show pagination, and then this will cycle through any available records based on the page size. You know, it's uh, 10 pages, but if I drag this here and make it smaller, now it says there's 17 pages. So based on whatever this, however many rows fit here, you'll have a fixed amount based on your API request, how many records you got back. Um, you can also turn on server side pagination here without actually setting up pagination in your API, just turning on the setting, and now it will cycle through that set of records and, and make it a scrollable list instead of pages. So there's two ways with the client side. Um, you can have the page numbers here if you turn off pagination, or you can turn that on and then have the scrolling list. And in either case, you're just getting an API request that returns everything. And then cycling through that, you're not actually using the page arrows to get the next page of results. So that's, um, that's client side. So we'll look, take a look at how to set this up now with the API. So in the query here, I am requesting only 100 records. This is a mock API and it can return any number. Um, but in your case, you might have an API that 
let's say it returns like up to 500 or a thousand records at a time and you've only got like a handful like 20 records right so you're just going to hit the end point and get back however many are there um, so in your case you might set up something similar here with a table widget it doesn't matter how many you get back and you're just using these arrows to cycle through it or you set it to scrollable so that's client side pagination and we're not really using any of the features here for pagination to call the API again. So next we're going to look at how to set up server side pagination using an API and the table widgets page number. So I'm going back to the query here. And if you look at the API in the pagination setting here, so I've got it set to none right now. That's the default. If you turn on to uh, paginate with the table page number, there's an example here. This setting actually doesn't change anything. It's just kind of, it's the same as none, but it's showing you what you need to do up here to bind that to the table widget. So for whatever table you want to connect to, it's just that table name dot page number. And we need to pass that in as a parameter up here, just however the API expects it. In this case, this API is looking for a page equals parameter. So if I say page equals, and then we can reference that table one, uh, page number and you can see that it's inserting one right now so if I run this I'm going to get page one of this API which is the same as not having the parameter at all but if we go back to the table widget now and I'll change this to page two so right now we are looking at page two of the hundred records we, we actually didn't call the API again I just went to page two right so the next thing here is we should make the limit the same as the page size here. So I'm going back to my query and instead of requesting a hundred here, I'll say table one and then there's the page size. And so now it's going to insert that 10 from here, only get 10 because that's the size of the table right now and, uh, and get us the first page. So if I go back to the UI here, we are on page two now, um, but there's a hundred records because we didn't run the API again yet. I'm going to refresh and it should say there's only 10 records and we're on page one, I believe. I don't think it's going to retain the uh, page two state that we were on there because we refreshed it. So yeah, I have 10 records and we're on page one, but the arrows don't do anything. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, we have the arrow looking at the page number in the API here. We're referencing that for the page and the size then, uh, of the page, the size of the table is determining how many we get per request. But we're not actually connected. We haven't uh, set those arrows up to call the API again. So back to the UI here. And in the table widget, I'm gonna to go to the uh, pagination section here and turn on server side pagination now because that's what we're, we're trying to set up, but we haven't um, enabled server side so these buttons can do something. So once you turn that on, you get a few more options here. You can tell it the total record count if you want, hard code that, or you can connect it to another query that gets the total record count if you have that. Um, but the thing we want right now is this on page change. So if we connect this to rerun that same query, get users, every time the user changes the page here, it's going to take that page number, send it to the API as requesting page two, requesting page three. So it's triggering the API to run again. And if we go back and look at the query now, you can see that it has inserted page three here and it's asking for 10 results because that's the size of the table widget. And if I re resize the table widget, it will continue to work and get a different number of pages uh, or, or number of rows per page rather. Okay, so that is server-side pagination with an API. There's also options here for trigger on page size change. So if your table is uh, adjusting the height or say you're on the last row, uh, last page, and it's not a full page, there's a, a trigger you can use there. For the total record count here, I have page numbers. It shows what number I'm on, but it doesn't show me uh, the total, you know, page three of what. So if you do know how many records you have, like say there are a thousand, now it knows that there's a thousand total and I'm on page three of a hundred. 
So this can either be hard coded or you could reference some other query. I only have the get users data here. Um, I don't think this API gives me a total record count. Let's see what's inside info. Yeah, so this is a mock API. There really is no total, but your API might have uh, metadata there that's got the page URL, um, total record count, or if you're using SQL, we'll show an example here next using SQL for pagination. And you can use a query for that to get the total record count. So one way or another, you put a number in here, either hard-coded or uh, dynamic based on a query, and that will control the value that you see up here for the number of pages. All right, so that's server-side pagination for an API. Uh, next, we're going to look at doing the same with a SQL query. Okay, now we're looking at an SQL query and we're going to do client-side pagination again first. So I'm getting back a thousand records in a single query and we're assuming that's the full set that you don't have enough records that you need to get multiple pages. You just get the, the full thousand. And then the user is cycling through those one page at a time here. You have pagination turned on and server side pagination turned off. So pretty easy to set up. The table widget will just split it into pages and let the user cycle through the records that are on the client side. Now we can keep this set up with client side pagination but turn on server-side pagination anyway, just like we did with the API example. And that gives you a scrollable table instead of having the page numbers. But in either case, it's really still just client-side pagination. You've got X number of records on the client side and we're not calling the API again. When it gets to the bottom of the you know, scroll here, it just continues through the entire set. And with this turned off for server-side pagination, we're not calling the API again here when we go through the page numbers. It's just cycling through displaying what's there on the client side. So next we can set this up for server side pagination, just like we did with the API. We'll use the tables size, the number of rows that are available here for the page size. And then the offset would be the page that we're on. Now we could set this up manually one piece at a time, just like we did with the API, but with databases and with Google Sheets and a few other data sources, we have another option. So I'm going to create a new page using this generate page with data feature. This will create a CRUD page automatically from any data source. So I'm going to select my Superbase data source here. And I have this sales table with a million, sorry, two million records. Um, I like to use this for examples with large data sets or pagination. There's an option to pick a searchable column here. Uh, this is just an option, so it sets up a, a where clause and, and shows you how to do that, but you don't need it. So I'm using this generate a page feature here from the new page, and you pick your data source, and then it's going to create all the queries, connect the table widget. It does a lot of stuff for you all in one shot. So we're gonna look at each piece of this here. Um, the arrows now are, are already triggering that query. We had to connect this before, but if I click to page two here, it's rerunning the query. So it's server-side paginated based off of the table size, the number of rows, and the page that we're on. And that's done automatically when you do this generate a page. So let's go look at the query. There's a few things here that aren't part of pagination, um, but just to point out real quick, we asked for a searchable column, and so it set up a where clause with a I like, so it's not case sensitive. And then there's a or condition that the table search text is blank. So if you try to search something in that text box, it'll rerun the query. But if the search box is blank, it still works. Um, just a nice little kind of error handling thing so that it doesn't uh, have no results if the user doesn't put anything in the search box there's an or so it's okay if it's blank um, then there's the order by and the order itself here the limit now here's where we're getting to the pagination stuff so the limit is detected from the page size of the table just like we did before but that was set automatically when we generated a page and the offset it's using the page number minus one times the number of rows so if you're on page one 
it's time zero. Your offset is the beginning. If you're on page two and it's minus one, right, then it's going to be the full page size, so our offset's 10. So all of that is set up for you automatically, but if you need to, uh, to do this from scratch, if you want to connect your data source and do each piece of it, this is the important part here. As you're setting up pagination, just connect that table size and the number of pages. And this is probably how you'll want to do it, the uh, page number minus one, so that it's page two starts on uh, after the 10th record. All right, so that is the query. Let's go look at the API connection again here. Uh, when we click those arrows, so there's the pagination arrows here, back to the section here on pagination. You can see that server-side pagination is turned on, and on page change, it's re-executing the select query. And it's the same query every time, but this number, this input is changing for the page number. So, so we've shown just about everything so far, but in the other example, the API didn't return a total record count. And so we just had to hard code that. Now that I'm using a SQL data source here, we can just select the count of records. So I'm going to create a new query on the same data source. And we really only need one field. So I'll get the ID and just get a count of those. from, and we're not looking at this table, it is the sales table. We do not need the limit now. And we'll call this get total record count. Oh, and it failed, auth. It is not the auth, um, it's the public schema. A lot of tables in this, and it went to the first one. Column uh, ID. Sales does not have an ID. We'll count the region. There it is. Okay. So I have a count of 2 million. And this data set is uh, just a read-only thing. I use it for reporting and stuff like this for examples. Um, so it doesn't change, but yours might. You might uh, constantly have a different number there, and you want to make it dynamic. So get total record count dot data dot. Oh, we want the first record there, and then the count. OK, so now it knows there are 2 million records total. And if I zoom out here so you can see the count, there you can see the total page count. So it knows, based on the table size, how many more pages there are. Okay, that wraps up this video on server and client-side pagination for APIs and SQL. I hope this has been helpful. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video.